All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Brandon Miller, who is in Toronto, Canada. How are you doing, Brandon? Hey, John. How are you? And uh, for over a decade, Brandon has been involved in immigration and settlement of newcomers to Canada, and he's operated a boutique immigration practice, Maple Immigration Services in Toronto, Canada, where he's helped countless, uh, countless people find their way to the Canadian shores and settle successfully in their new home. And what we're going to talk about today is securing a safe and secure alternative home in Canada for you and your family and getting a second passport and why why actually living abroad or living in a different country how that can actually benefit you from a business point of view and as a as a just a point of reference let's say uh i'm an immigrant you know i came to the us uh, from from ireland during the dot com time and i can certainly attest to the benefit of of living and working and experiencing a, a completely different country and culture. Um, so, so Brandon, let's just let's just get right down to it. Why awesome. Canada? Why Canada? Well, uh, so many different, so many different reasons. Um, so, you know, look, it's it's really a personal decision. And some of the main things that we hear is is that people are looking, um, you know. Uh, to expand different business options for them, maybe get a different passport so they can open up other ways that they can travel. Uh, some people want to move here because they're looking very long term and they want to think about what, what is life going to look like in you know, 10, 20, 30 years. The biggest thing uh, you know, for my American audience, uh, a lot of things that I hear all the time is the health care. Uh, obviously, we have uh, we have free health care um, and, and that's, a, that's a huge benefit. And I know a very interesting issue for a number of people. Um, and, and honestly, just the, uh, you know, just the lack of culture shock, if you will, living here, if you know, if you're moving in from uh, the US or other Western nations, it's, it's pretty much the same. So uh, it's close. Um, you know, you can, you can move up pretty, pretty easily and still find all the comforts of home. Yeah, so so for a lot of people, uh, the idea of moving to another country, even if it is moving from the states up to Canada, uh, seems like an, a very daunting thing for them, and it seems like oh my goodness, like there must there's so many different uh, you know rules and regulations and qualifications and all of that you got to go through, and then you know where am I going to locate myself and how will my family? Yeah. So how do you help people work through these issues because they tend not to be as daunting as people think. Yeah, they, they tend not to be as long as uh, people get the proper information. Yeah. So one of the things that I put together in, in the system that I uh, that I created called the Immigration Success System uh, over a 10 year period was based on what I was seeing were the biggest traps. And it's, you know, look, it's it's pretty straightforward. It's first stage planning, second stage implementation or execution. <laughs> But the third stage is the settlement. And I think that's actually one of the biggest, uh, you know, things that people overlook. They actually, a lot of people will focus on just getting here and they don't think about what it's going to look like once they, once they come. So I, I look at it like, okay, you have to have your plan. We put together something called the immigration blueprint. Uh, and then from there, we actually go and implement it. And that's actually applying to the different programs. And the idea with the implementation is, 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 you know, dealing with any type of government bureaucracy, you want to get in and out as quickly as possible, efficiently, cost effective, and just like as, as little, as few touch points as possible. But then after that, there's the settlement. And what we do there is, is we look at like, you know, hey, there's the pre-settlement. Uh, and I always use the example of somebody who's in a regulated profession. You know, there's a lot of things that you can do before you even set foot in Canada here. Uh, nurses, for instance, nurses can literally get all of their stuff sorted out with the regulatory body up to the point where they're going to get their PR and then they can be confirmed for their for their licensure here. So it allows you to hit the ground running. On top of that, um, you know, you've got to have a plan when you hit the ground here to know exactly what you're going to do uh, once you once you step foot here. So that's it's all it's all planning and execution, right? Nothing different than anything else. So yeah. I go ahead. 
No, I was going to say. So, so why do you think it? Is, why do you think it is a benefit or important for people to to consider spending time abroad? And why do you think it helps them, you know, with their business and life in general? Well, uh, it, again, it it really is a personal decision. I I think going from say you know, the US or, or a Western country to Canada is not a big stretch. When you start looking at people that are that are coming maybe from a third world country or another country it, it, with where there's a different language, it can be a little challenging. I look at it as uh, benefit wise, um, just being able to, um, you know, opportunity. It just, it, it allows you to see different things here. It allows you to live a, maybe a little bit more comfortably and it allows for different opportunities in the future, not only for yourself, kids, generations to come. And how has your experience of, of being abroad, how does, how does that help or how has that helped you help other people? Oh, I love that question. Um, okay, so I, I spent 15 years overseas. Uh, I lived mostly in Asia, Middle East, and, and I've traveled quite extensively around the world. Um, but uh, it, it allows me to really identify with my clients. Um, I also know what it's like to move to a new country and get settled in, et cetera, et cetera. But I also understand why uh, when I came back to Canada, one of the reasons, well, the reason that I came back was, is I just had uh, my first daughter. She was born overseas. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I wanted to raise her here. So I actually repatriated myself to Canada based on the, a lot of the reasons that a lot of my clients will come here. Um, and that's basically to find a safe, secure home for my family and raise them in, within the Canadian context. So uh, that was important to me. Yeah, no, it, 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 it's, it's, it's very interesting, I think, because you can bring a, bring a perspective. How, when you talk to people who are, who are looking to make the move, I think one of the things, and, and I've seen this with other people, is, uh, as you said about the planning, but also about your time frame. I think, are you, are you moving for a few years? Are you thinking of settling down for good? Are you not sure in between? Because I think those kind, of, those kind of decisions can impact the mindset or the approach to a move. Yeah, definitely. And that's actually a really good point that you brought up because, um, you know, you, uh, you, you moved into the US, so you've been through the whole green card process and, you know, there's a lot of different I this and I that form, right? Uh, it, you know, it's, it's funny. Um, the, the, the process in the US is a lot more onerous than it is in Canada. So the green card is equal to what we call a PR card or a permanent residency. But in the US, you generally have to stay. Uh, and if you're going to be outside, uh, you generally to keep your green card pretty much safe, you need that in status to be, mm -hmm. you know, within six months, right? You need to kind of yeah. do that or you got to get these travel passport log things. Um, in Canada, you can literally come, you can land, and then you can disappear for three years if you want, because <laughs> you only have to be here for two out of five years. So it's a really good option for people if they're like, okay, I want to get that and I want to secure it. They can come in and out. Uh, it's not as onerous in that respect and it allows for the flexibility. And then if they want to go and get their uh, passport, which is the second passport, uh, you know, that only takes three years as opposed to five in the US. So it's pretty quick. Um, and then once you have a passport, you know, that's it. You can claim non-residency, you can do whatever. There's a lot of different tax strategies that you can employ with, uh, you know, setting up different branch locations uh, for businesses, things like that. Uh, no, that, that's, um, that, that's great information. Yeah, I mean, I, I went through the green car process here and the, uh, and the citizenship process. And actually the green car process is more onerous than the citizenship one, to be honest. Yes, but, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so I always encourage people use use an expert if you can. That's what I right. did, and I think. And if you're going to go to Canada, check out check out Brandon. Uh, um, but I think the other part is I think if you're going to move somewhere, I do think that you have to make some commitment in your head because otherwise, mm -hmm. I don't think you will really give yourself the proper experience. And and the first you know hurdles or whatever obstacles you come up with, you'll probably you know you'll be tempted just to pack up and. And go home. Um, I always, I always say to people, uh, if you're two years, you're 
first year you're on vacation, right? It just seems right. like a vacation. Honeymoon. Second, yeah, second year, you're away from home. Third year, you're starting to transition. It's starting to become more like it's your home and not the yeah. other place. And I think by by year four, you've moved. You know, you exactly, you live somewhere, yeah. yeah, somewhere else. And I think, uh, and and I think that's it's important that people realize that there are certain, almost kind of psychological stages to this. And if you don't give yourself enough time or commitment, you know, you're quite likely to prematurely cut something short. Yeah, that's actually a really good way of putting it. I I uh, I like that because really it is the first the first year is like there's so much happening. It's new. You're setting up a new place. You're getting some new furniture. Like everything's like ooh, and then it's like wow, I'm into life. So, yeah, no, that's uh, that's a really good um, that's a really good way of putting it. I think what the one thing that I would add to that too is that the people that I see that are actually do well and are who are successful, it goes back to the planning, but it also goes back to educating themselves. And I think that um, a lot of people, you know the clients that scare me the most are the people that will come to me. They're like, Hey, I want to go to Canada. I'm like, okay, do you have any questions? No, no, let's just do this thing. I'm like, <laughs> really? Okay. Pretty big life decision there. But if that's what you want to do, that's, they scare me a little bit uh, in terms of, you know, how they want to, how they, how they're, how they're going. So what is, what's happening um, immigration wise in Canada? What are the trends right now? Oh, man, what a great question. Okay, so uh, that's, man, here we go. So uh, right now is a very good opportunity for people if they want to come here. And the reason is, is because right now, Canada has the lowest birth rate since 1918. Uh, any economy, uh, any modern economy is based on growth, uh, mm -hmm. not only just of the stock market, but also of the people to fuel that growth. Uh, we have a declining birth rate. Uh, we have uh, COVID has been very interesting because we have the, we prior to COVID, we had these very aggressive immigration numbers. We're trying to bring a lot more people in. Now there's a big like hole in the pipeline for that uh, where, where they need to fill that. So we've actually have immigration levels that, you know, are generational. We haven't seen them in so long. Anybody who's young, anybody who is from like university educated, speaks English or French, has a year of skilled work experience and is below the age of 30, what an awesome time right now because we're bringing in younger people. And if you wanna talk about uh, why we're doing that, we have all of these really great things like you know retirement benefits, uh, medical, we have the medical benefits, we have prescriptions, we have the Canadian pension fund, all of these things. But Canada's like a Ponzi scheme, right? Because to keep all of that stuff moving, we actually have to bring in the young people to be able to fuel it. So to contextualize that, back in the 1970s, there were six and a half workers to every one retiree. Currently, we're looking at four to one. And if we don't make any changes, it's two to one. So immigration right now and, and two to one in 2035. So they're really mm -hmm. trying to front end and get a lot of people in here. So, you know, it's it's pretty much a no brainer. Uh, mm -hmm. If if people really want to come, you just have to know what steps are and be able to to get through them. Yeah, no, that's a, that, that's amazing. And and obviously, uh, yeah, such great opportunity, particularly with the demographics and, and all of that. And then um, and then so uh, when somebody just says, called you up, Brandon, and says, OK, uh, I want to come to Canada and hopefully not like that last person you referenced who is no right. idea why they want to come, <laughs> but you've actually done a little research and put a little thought into it. Uh, what do you specifically do for them? So I have my uh, done for you uh, process, which is which is Maple Immigration Services. Uh, so generally, what we would do is we would do a consultation and design everything and, and do it for the person. Uh, for somebody who wants, and and this is for the for the second person that I was telling you about, the person that wants to look into and educate themselves and and really take control of the process. Through my second passport, uh, mysecondpassport.ca. We uh, we have courses where people we take we've taken we've taken our internal processes we've unpacked them through in a very systematic way so people can go through and they can get the help that they need when they need it. The benefit is there's two benefits and the reason that we did that 
anytime you hire a professional and I, you know, my weakness is numbers. Uh, but you know, I run a business, I, I have an accountant and there's that vulnerability that I have with, with going to my accountant and he's like, yeah, sign these tax forms. I'm like, Michael, you know, are we good here? Like, you know, but I trust him. So, um, there's that thing where I have to kind of put that in somebody's hands. And it's the same thing with immigration. I, I, on the other hand, want to take people and I want to educate them through, you know, second passport, take them through the steps, understand why we're making the decisions that we're making, et cetera, et cetera. And that's why that was actually born. So we've, what I've, what I've done is I've put it into a system and then I've unpacked it so that people can go through logically, not only immigrate, but to settle. So that's done through my second passport.ca. Yeah, and I, I like the I like the part you said about the settle because obviously a lot of people can help you or can say they can help you with the first bit. Mm -hmm. um, but to be perfectly honest, I mean, uh, you get through the first bit. I mean, that's that's great, but the yeah. settlement part is almost as difficult, if not harder, in some ways. It it actually so, yeah. I, before I did immigration, like the actual legal side of it, I was actually, um, I worked for two years and I helped people settle in. And that's why I've always looked at a very holistic approach mm -hmm. to it, because I've seen people come here and do like amazingly well, like amazingly well. And I've seen other people just like crash and burn. And it really boiled down to the mindset and it boiled down to having a plan. The mindset, if you're coming here and you're coming so far away and you're uprooting yourself and you're doing all of these things, you know, why not dive in like headlong into the place and get the most out of it? But you also need to educate yourself to know where those resources are. Mm -hmm. There's a number of like really good government settlement resources that are out there, but there's a lot of them that aren't so good. And, you know, I always told people that, you know, a lot of the government funded options you have to look at where the priorities lie. And I got to be careful with what I'm saying, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're basically being funded by the government and their money that comes in the form of a grant is based on how many people they service and how long you're sitting in a chair. So, you know, there's things out there where they're like, yeah, we're going to make a resume for you and it's going to take two weeks. I'm like, you don't need two weeks, get online, go hire somebody on Fiverr, just get it done. You can do it in a weekend, right? Get out and start working. Don't sit on the chair. So people just need to, they need to come. They need to like have, be, be very deliberate, have their plan in hand the day they land and be like, okay, I need to go get my social insurance number. Then I can open up and get a bank. And then I, so it's just like, boom, boom, boom. It's a checklist, right? So, yeah, yeah. And, and it's so it's so it's so incredibly important because uh, when you do move somewhere, as you said, I mean, there's a lot of new things, but there's be a lot of things that you're not expecting and there's little things will crop up. So really taking care of all the basics and, and having a plan and having a checklist is really important. Um, yeah. I think when I came here, I don't I certainly didn't have a checklist. Um, I took it, you know, got advice from people who ever muddled through it and it all, it all worked out fine. But but I would not recommend that approach. I would no. definitely recommend the approach of, of, of having a checklist and having everything and working with the professional. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's uh, it works out. A lot of people, it's it's actually, I'm, I'm happy to hear what you're saying because a lot of people, they'll come and they'll get through it. And, and, you know, people will get through it. But a lot of times what we see is, is that people will be like, well, I did it. I can, you know, you can do blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, it, but everybody's personal and different. So it works out for a lot of people, but when it doesn't work out, it really doesn't work out. So it's it's actually pretty, it can be pretty sad. So again, it's nothing different than anything in life. You got to have a plan and you got to be realistic to know that you can actually execute on that plan. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, I, when I do, to do my green card, uh, I had a wonderful uh, attorney in San Francisco. She was fantastic and just, you know, walked me through the whole, you know, the process and she guided us. It was fantastic because I will tell you, your green card interview is stressful. Yeah. <laughs> just for anybody yeah. who's going to, it's stressful. So having somebody by your side uh, advising you is not a bad idea um, at all. So just um, in, in, in closing, Brandon, um, mm -hmm. give, us your, give us your last thoughts about why people should consider Canada. 
Well, it's funny. When I wrote the book, I said, have, uh, have a safe, secure alternative home mm-hmm. just in case. Um, I think that, uh, it, and, and honestly, this was before, you know, any of the craziness in the world. And I look at it now, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, did mm-hmm. I, like, so one of the things that I like to tell people is, is that I deal with people all over the world. And you look at, uh, you look at a lot of non-Western type countries where people are looking at the second passport as a tool. Mm-hmm. And they look at it as a way of like, well, you know, life is okay here. I lead a good lifestyle in the country that I'm in. But, you know, the government might just come in and take my money or might do this. So they look at it as a way to have that kind of like in my back pocket, I can get up and move. They have a nice secure place to keep some money overseas, et cetera, et cetera. I think that um, from a Western country standpoint, we don't really do that as much, but um, lately what I've been seeing is there's been a lot more interest in that. I've never, uh, you know, I've never been like all doom and gloom and you got to do this and that um, because like sky's falling in Canada's <laughs> like, you know, unicorns and rainbows here. Cause it's not, it's got its challenges, but it's a pretty good place to live. Um, and I think that people are starting to think about, hmm, maybe I need some options. What are things going to look like in 10 or 20 years? If I can get this thing and have it so that it's available to me, available to my kids, what's life going to look like for my kids or my grandkids, right? So these are some things that I, you know, we're starting to see, you know, and I, like, I'll tell you, I, I hear some pretty impressive opinions of some forward thinking people. And one of the ones that always resonates with me is I had a woman many, many years ago, and I hear this a lot now, actually, but many years ago, she said to me, I want, I was, I want to move to Canada as opposed to Australia. I was like, oh, why is that? And she's like, you know, Canada's got a lot of water. And I think in 50 or 70 years, water is going to be really important. I was like, okay. wow, that's, uh, that's pretty interesting. And then you start looking at different places around the world. The environmental argument actually is entering into it more. I'm hearing, you know, from people, California, Arizona, 10 years, you know, water's water might be a little bit challenging. Now, again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pin my thing on that, but I'm going to go back to options. You have options. And that's, that's kind of what, uh, that's, that's what I think it basically boils down to is options. Yeah, and and I and I would I would underline that and, and personally underline that uh, you know obviously I I'm lucky to have two passports um, you know obviously a US one and Ireland you know Ireland allows you dual passports Ireland yeah. care less Ireland is right. one of those countries that could care they're like yeah, knock yourself out if right. you can get a passport somewhere <laughs> it's else true, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. but it, but it's certainly, uh, and you know, it's obviously having an Irish passport and, and my wife is American and my son also qualify for those passports, which opens up the European Europe. union to them, right? Yeah. Europe to them. So to your point, I think second passports options are always a good thing. Cause you just never know about the future. And the other thing, maybe your children, you know, want to travel and, and make it easier. Maybe, maybe your kids want to go work in Canada for a year or two or whatever, but it, it, anything that makes that process easier for them and they don't have to go through, uh, through some of the rigorous things about getting, you know, temporary work visas and all that, I think yep. is a good thing. I'll give you an example right now, uh, based on, uh, your son with an Irish and a mm-hmm. U.S. passport. So as one of the options. Uh, Canada has a program called IEC, which is International Experience Class, and it allows for people to have working holiday visas. Canada and Ireland are very close, uh, and Ireland has some of the biggest quotas available for Irish workers to come here. Yeah. If, if your son's got an Irish passport, he can literally go apply and he can get a two-year work visa and do whatever he wants here, right? As a, that program is not open to Americans. So it's very interesting where when you have those options, right, where people can actually go and do these different things. And I, I agree with you. I think it's all about, we don't know what the world's going to look like. You can move. And just from worker mobility, like, you know, fantastic. Yeah. You've, you've got Europe. And then with the American passport, you've got, you know, Mexico, Canada, US through Kuzma or yeah. USMCA now. It's, it's fantastic. 
Yeah, no, it is. Yeah, I was warned people it's dangerous to open up your country to the Irish because they'll just pile in, you know, because they just love <laughs> traveling. Yeah, <laughs> we've uh, we've got a we've got a lot of people coming over from Ireland as well, yeah. and uh, like it's it's amazing. Like even I'm in Toronto, and you know you you uh, I've I've a I've got a ton of Irish clients, but uh, just just everywhere, and it's nice. You know, you've yeah. got uh, you've got people everywhere, and you can spot them everywhere right so it's great <laughs> exactly yeah i would say you know the you know paddies were a bit of a kind of gypsy race you know we yeah you know we love to travel and we turn up everywhere <laughs> that's it that's it that's great <laughs> all right well listen brandon this is fantastic listen all of brandon's information will be below this video so i would encourage you to go check it out but before we go brandon is there anything else you want to add no, no, it's great. You know, I will tell you, uh, one of the things that I started doing is I have a book, it's called uh, Second Passport. Uh, if people want to go, they can buy it on Amazon. But you know what, uh, if people want to email me, uh, they can just send me a quick email. Uh, and, and no, it's not I'm not putting in some like, you know, mailing mailer <laughs> thing, but just it'll come directly to me. And it's Brandon at my second passport.ca. Uh, I'll send you an ebook if you'd like, um, and then you can start there and you can read and then, and then that's it. It's, it's, uh, it's a good way to start. And at least I just, you know, to be honest, John, I, I'm just happy if anybody reads it, you know, so uh, I love it when people read it and they get back to me and say, yeah, this is great. So uh, branded at my second passport.ca. I'll just say that we were listening to John here and uh, I'll send you a free ebook. Yeah, listen, that's fantastic, Brandon. And uh, as I said, I would uh, encourage people to check it out. As Brandon said, it's not as uh, onerous a process as you think it is. And options, options are always options. a good thing. Yeah. Yes. All right. My name is John Golden. Thanks, Brandon. And I will see all of you for another interview really soon. Thank you.